All right, guys, today we're working on these drum brakes. Pretty sure mine need to be replaced. Truck's making a lot of squeaking. You can feel pretty good wear on the brakes themselves, on the uh, drums. We're gonna show you how to uh, check to make sure, uh, you know, if it's time to replace them or not. Duo, be quiet. So uh, we're gonna show you how to do that with just some simple things you have at the house, um, nothing fancy because uh, this channel isn't about that. You know, this channel is about practicality. So let's get into it, guys. guys we're getting down to the nitty-gritty on this um, one more thing to do before you pull the drum off just got to release the brakes off of that and that's pretty easy to do and what I did I just use a wood chisel and uh, cut a little V in it and that way you can release this tab which will allow you to turn this and you're going to turn it clockwise turn it clockwise and it will release the brakes that's your this piece is your slack adjuster As you can see, the brakes are released from the drum. We can pull it on off now. And with these brake drums, a lot of times you'll have to uh, hit them with a sledgehammer on the top, about right there. This one, I think it's, hell, it's broke loose already. Let's pull it on off. There it is. First thing uh, I'm seeing here is cracks everywhere. That drum looks, it looks like hell. <laughs> Probably should have been replaced a long time ago. 
but hey it's getting replaced now right guys so anyway those are all little cracks little hairline cracks just all around the damn thing um yeah that's, that's not looking good <laughs> plus on the inside here it's got little pieces that are uh i mean i just pulled one off a while ago and things just it's just falling apart and you can see right here quite a bit of wear it's hard to see that lip in this video but it's a pretty good little lip there i'm trying to find the uh, reading on this i don't even need the reading at this point to be honest but I, I would like to know where it's at the reading on how much wear is allowed for this thing um not a lot of videos on this stuff so we're gonna do some more dig and see if we can figure it out well this is how I wore out mine are i scraped off the face of this drum and that's all i could find five four so there's some other numbers that have just gotten uh, wiped off the face of the drum, I guess. So it is three days later. Um, Duo was up late last night barking, so he's been he's been yawning a lot. Yeah. Anyway, we got the new drum right here. There's the old one. I could not find the readings on the old one. Didn't know where they were at. I found them on this one. It's right here on the inside part. Right there. No, it's upside down. But it says maximum diameter 15.12, so that, that'd be 15.12 inches. So I didn't even need to measure the inside width of mine because he saw all the cracks on it. Um, saw a crack like that, then it's bad, <laughs> you know. So, but if you were going to take an inside measurement and you don't have a um, the tool for that, I forget what they call it, uh, like a brake drum caliper. Duo, quit. I'll be out there in a minute if you want to play. Because you can take some... <laughs> you can take some saws, sawzall blades. Quit. Go. Go. And you can put them like this and then kind of stretch them out. Right until they just touch. And then bring them on out. And just take your vice grips. <laughs> There we go. And now you can measure, see where you're at. That'll tell you your inside diameter. Gets you a good tape measure too. And we're right at 15 and 1 8. So now we gotta do a conversion. You can just go to Google or um, DuckDuckGo. I don't use Google. And just type in convert 15 and 1 8 to decimal form. And I believe it's 15.125. So what I say what our maximum diameter was a while ago, I can't remember. 15.12. So we are literally right at the maximum diameter on that. I guess we changed it at a good time. And if you guys don't know the um, FMCSA regulation on that, I'll put it right here. So basically whatever the manufacturer of the drum says is the limit, that's what the limit is. Um, I've never seen, or I've never had a, uh, I'm not going to say that, I'm going to jinx myself. Um, I think you guys probably knew where I was going to go with that. It had something to do with uh, getting pulled over. So anyway, we're not going to go there. I'm curious, I'm curious what the inside diameter of the new one is. Let's, let's see. All right, so we took the measurement of the new one. Let's just see what it, where it's at. That'll tell us how much wear is allowed on this thing. Okay, so we're right in between 14 and 15 sixteenths and 15. So that would be uh, 
15 16 30 31 30 seconds so 14 and 31 30 seconds i'm gonna convert that to decimal form then subtract that from 15 and 1 8 in decimal form that'll give you how much wear is allowed on this thing um of course that's not exact that's pretty obvious you know i don't want to spend four hundred dollars on a tool that i hardly ever use you can get one for two hundred dollars but it, the reviews weren't very good if i'm going to buy one it's going to be a good one so i'm not i'm not going to spend four hundred dollars on a tool i use maybe once every couple years um, i'll just do it this way looks like we we picked a good time to change it oh no oh no go get the toy Nah, don't you buy my shoes? Nope. Get that toy. Oh no. Go get it. Oh. Where's my wedding ring? Ah, 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 ah. Okay, we're done. Well, we got the brake drum on, so now we can go ahead and take our slack back up for that um, for our, our slack adjuster. We only have a parking brake for one axle, and you know that because of the brake chamber down here. See how large that one is? It's got an extra spring in there that the other two axles don't have. See, that one's really small. Got a really small brake chamber on the very rear axle, and then you go up to the front. You can see that the front brake chamber is really small too so there's only one axle that works as your parking brake on the other two axles whenever you take up your slack you can do it without having to build the air up and release your brakes and i imagine too you could just you could just hit your brakes and the uh, slack adjuster would automatically take up the slack but uh, i don't know i like to do it i like to do it this way um i guess i'm old school like that anyway some trucks don't have automatic slack adjusters, so I guess this is how you would do it if you didn't have an automatic one. All right, so we know that clockwise loosen it, so let's go counterclockwise, and that will um, take up the tension. And you'll see this thing right here pop. You'll see it pop as I uh, turn this thing. And you can see as I'm turning this that the brakes are uh, slowly expanding. Didn't take a whole lot since a, it's a brand new brake drum. Just keep on going until you feel it stop. Don't don't keep on turning it. Just once you feel it kind of stop. Right there. And then go ahead and take it back a little bit. Of course, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to get your tool out and pull that tab out. And then just take it back uh, about a half a turn. That'll give you enough uh, clearance so your, your, your brake pads aren't rubbing on the drum. All right, so we turned it about a half a turn. Let's see how this drum spins. Well, don't have the tire on yet. Let's try it out here. Push this back on here a little bit. Spin this thing a little. Oh yeah. That's good. And this is a good point if your tires are, uh, you know, wore down a little. Mine are wore down, I don't know, maybe a third of their life. I do have some flat spots on one of them though, and so they're probably not gonna last a whole lot longer. Should have replaced the shock sooner. Good time to move that driver's side tire to the passenger side and passenger side to the driver's side. And here's what I'm talking about. You can really see this flat spot right here. If you look right there. That's not good. Uh, but you know, I hardly ever get um, 
the full life out of a front tire. And I've heard that from a lot of guys. They just, it's hard to get that front tire to wear down evenly like, like the drive tires and trailer tires will. And I know the alignment's good. I just did that. I know that my kingpin bushings are good. Um, I know that my tie rod is good. Shock absorbers are brand new, so it is what it is. That's what happens when your shocks are bad. Duo, duo. Man, that dog. What? Why are you always trying to interrupt me, dude? I'm trying to do video. There's another flat spot there. It's not as bad as that other one. But the other tire looks good. Well, since I'm doing a video where I'm putting back on a wheel, I figured I would talk about um, your torque and how to figure it out. I use this bar, and um, as you can see, it's about, the total length of this bar is 40 inches. Um, to figure out your torque, you're going to want to measure from right here, the center of where your socket's going to go, to where you're going to be putting most of the force. So, about, for me, maybe 37 uh, 36 possibly so that'll be our that'll be our, that will be our length 37 inches then you're gonna go you're gonna look up torque multiplier calculator and I know on DuckDuckGo the first thing I think it's either the first duo it's either the first or the second site this that is pulled up when you search that it's called uh, the calculator you'll just click on it so anyway, once you get to the side, it uh, gives you three options. The first one, it, it just says, I want to calculate, and you're going to put a torque, because that's what we're trying to figure out. Next one is force, meaning your weight. Um, I weigh about 195, and then you want to make sure you put pounds as the force. So whatever you weigh, put that in there. And then the next one is the length. So the length on mine, as you saw a while ago, was about 37, and you want to make sure you put inches on that. Um, and then that will calculate your torque and I know on mine it comes up to about for 37 inches it comes up to about 600 pound feet which is 50 pound feet over um, what you really need which which that's fine shoot the shops put they put 1200 you know on there <laughs> at least sometimes they put 1500 You'd strip out your your studs sometimes there's that's how you figure it out and if you're Say you're like 150 pounds, you're probably going to need a little bit longer of a bar, so you might need a little extension on that. Well, we got the truck back on the ground, and an easy way to get these things tight without running the risk of, um, like when the tire's straight, you run the risk of, you know, you hit your head on this mirror, um, you might hit your feet on these steps. I just turn the wheel, turn it to the right, uh, that way you got nothing out here and um, you can kind of use the mirror to balance yourself. So I just stand on it right there. We know what that torque is from what I showed y'all earlier, about 600 pound feet, so that's plenty enough. If uh, you don't think that's enough, you can, you can jump on those bar a little bit, that'll give you a little more extra torque or you can go and find you a big old boy stand on this thing so, be nice to have an air gun and a, a big compressor but <laughs> I don't have that much money it's about three grand 
that one's good and we'll just do it like that all the way around it guys well I guess we're finished up with the truck so remember um, things like these you can do yourself don't think that you can um, everybody can learn stuff like this we do all have you know our limitations but uh, just don't set them low and as always don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel if you subscribe to my channel a pretty amazing thing will happen. My neighbor's explorer over here will, uh, it'll just quit leaking coolant. So subscribe to my channel and that'll happen. He will appreciate that. All right, guys, see you on the next one.